If you flip the switch, Jamie Hess is the creator of the Gratitudeology podcast and daughter of legendary news anchor Joan London as well. And she's joining us now to give us tips to practice the attitude of gratitude. First of all, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. All right, so let's jump in talking about why is it sometimes difficult for some people to practice gratitude and was there a moment that this just the light bulb went off for you? Yeah. yeah. Well, of course, growing up as the daughter of Joan London. Yeah. And then I had this dark turn in my teens and 20s, which I talk about on the show, where I fell in with drugs and alcohol. Mm -hmm. And people would just say, just knock it off. You have a nice life. Just be grateful. And not only was that not helpful advice, it would make me feel shame. Yeah. Like, they're right. I should just be grateful, but I don't <laughs> feel grateful. So I understand when people say it's really hard to just be grateful. It's actually an exercise, you guys. Really I mean, is. here's the thing. If you want good arms, you wouldn't go to the gym once and be like, where are my biceps, yeah. right? You would go consistently every day. Same thing with working those neural paths ways with gratitude. Absolutely. I agree with you on this. But what are some of the benefits, you'd say, of practicing gratitude on a daily basis? Well, this is what I also need people to know, because this is not like woo-woo. It's actual science. There's mm -hmm. a lot of research about gratitude. Because <laughs> you know what? People say, oh, just be grateful. Yeah. It's like, yeah. well, let me tell you, it could be better than that pill or that potion or lotion yeah. you're looking for to have less anxiety. Practicing gratitude every day has been proven to have the ability to decrease your diastolic blood pressure, to put your body in a parasympathetic state, which is like that rest and digest. Mm -hmm. and then also to decrease cortisol, which is the stress hormone. I like that you say it's not a whole bunch of woo-woo, like when people are like, just manifest it. No, right. you gotta put in the work, work, too. Yes, <laughs> you gotta true. work. That's true. All right, so you recently launched Gratitudeology, the podcast. What are some of the common themes that people will hear from this podcast? Here's what I loved about the podcast. I interview all of these celebrities and thought leaders, and they all have the same story. Something dark happened where it seemed like the darkest time of their life, oh, and yes. it came out on the other side with more gratitude, with a better perspective. Like, you know, I interviewed Teddy Mellencamp, who's from The Real Housewife. She went through a, a skin cancer scare, and all of a sudden got perspective on what matters. Or Rain Wilson, who had a difficult childhood, and that led him on a lifelong mm. journey towards spirituality. So I say if people are having a dark time at home, well, first of all, they can text the word gratitude to 33777 and hear my <laughs> podcast, but honestly, I wanted people to come out better on the other side for having listened to the show. Yeah, okay, so let's let's help people uh, find gratitude in moments of... I like of, this exercise. Moments so. of yeah. chaos. We're going to give you some stressful situations, mm -hmm. and you explain how to practice gratitude. So the first scenario right now, you walk into work, and you immediately feel the stress seeping through your skin. Yeah. What do you do? We, we can all identify with that. You turn around and go home. Well, <laughs> try not to bail, okay? Because the resilience comes from sticking through it. So that's like a host of self-centered fears. Yeah. My boss hates me. My coworkers think I stink. Mm -hmm. You know, the client yeah. thinks I'm not enough. So right-sizing it. So putting together a little gratitude list with an affirmation attached. Like, I'm grateful to be employed and ready to slay the day. Or I'm grateful to learn new skills by maybe having a tough conversation with my boss and uh, competent to master them. Go into the restroom. I call it bathroom prayer. Go into that yes. restroom and say, to yourself in the mirror. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love that. I always like to think about, you know, there were times when I prayed and cried oh, about God. having an opportunity. Yes. So, yes. you know, we're going to ride this thing till the wheels uh -huh. fall off. Okay, so the next <laughs> scenario, someone cuts you off in traffic or in New York, you're walking Ooh. on the street, somebody stops right in front of you. Oh, that happened today. This is all about <laughs> right-sizing the anger because it can feel really visceral in the moment. And then you deprioritize things that actually matter, like your safety. So it's about saying something like, you know, I'm grateful that I can take the higher road and not put my safety in jeopardy. Or even I'm grateful for my family, family and I wouldn't do anything to prioritize coming home to them in one piece. Really quickly here, parents yeah. are at Ooh, their kids. wits ends with them kids and they just won't listen, so quickly. <laughs> yeah, I got two, they're five and eight and I get it. <laughs> but this is the most poignant one because by practicing gratitude and by having a gratitude-centered response to them, you're actually teaching them a lesson. So how about I'm grateful for my child and one day I'm going to miss these days. Oh, That's a good one. Yeah. yeah. When they go off to college. Yeah. I agree, and they <laughs> leave you with the bills. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I, I give gratitude journals as gifts oh, to friends. It's um, the best. Where's mine? Very, I never got you. one. Well, you have a birthday coming okay, up. For you. more tips on practicing gratitude or to listen to Gratitude Gratitudeology podcast, check them out on their Instagram right now.